Ja, ja. Ja, ja. Ja, ja. Ja, ja. Ja, ja. You're on stomping ground? Yes, down to here, Marsh Lane Bootle, Brunswick Boys Club there, where we grew up as kids. My dad used to own this pub, so we were always in and out of it. And uh, our junior school is just there. Everything was going on around here as kids, playing football, a bit of school, so, uh, yeah, quite lively. Quite lively. <laughs> so at the Derby, which is a massive game, and it must have been a massive game for you as a player, and a kid yeah. as well, growing up around here. But at the Derby, we've got an opportunity to engage with some local organisations who are doing some brilliant initiatives on the day and helping out local food banks. OK, let's go. Go ahead. What was it like for you as a kid around here? Was it more Liverpool, Everton, or was it split? No, I always felt it was more Everton around here. Well, certainly the kids who, who I played football were around here. It was still all big Everton fans. We used to play a lot in the streets as well, uh, well football on if here. If there's anything that sums it up, it's that. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because that's you as a kid, isn't it? You yeah. Everton kid. Yeah, yeah. In the mid-80s. But when you're talking about the yeah, Derby it... game and what it was, like, it, it still feels like towards the biggest game in the world, doesn't it, yeah, to me? Yeah. But I think then it, it almost was. You know, it, we're talking about going to, you know, getting buses from here to the cup final. Certainly 86 and 89 was the Merseyside uh, cup final. So it was, uh, one was going to win the league, one was going to miss out. The FA Cup was the same. So it was, it was a brilliant but time. But for as a you kid. as a kid, because I've heard you say when you first went training with Liverpool, you went in your Everton kit and yeah. all that stuff. Your first derby as a Liverpool player, what was going through your mind then? Well, the, the, the one that uh, really hurt me was I got injured. I'd, I'd played about three or four games one season and I got injured the game before and missed the derby. It was at Goodison and uh, Liverpool got beat 2-0 in that game. I was absolutely devastated. And the next one I played was actually played against Duncan Ferguson. Yeah. I was, I was a centre-back, I was only about 19. And uh, we drew one, Ferguson scored, and then Paul in scored. So it was 1-1 one, one at Anfield. So it didn't win it, but it was brilliant just to be, you know, play a Merseyside derby. You've been to so many of them, whether that was uh, at Goodison or Anfield as a fan. Oh yeah, I've got a big Evertonian here. What happened to Bournemouth? Well, <laughs> <laughs> we're talking about Merseyside derbies, yeah, and we've got one of the biggest Evertonians hey, how are you? here. How are you doing? So there seems a strong uh, community spirit. What yeah. was it like to grow up in? It was brilliant. I mean, you know, people always talk about, you know, tough upbringings, you know, certain type of areas, but, but you only have sort of one upbringing. You yeah, don't yeah. know anything else. And for me, it was it was fantastic. We were just playing football on the streets all the time, around just up and down all these different streets. You had mates in different types of ones. That street there, Chaucer Street. That's where my dad grew up. My dad was born on that street, and all the family just all up and down these streets. Really, so it was a it was a great time to be to be around. You wouldn't change it for anything. When you've got a mural on a wall, you know, the next street to where your dad had the pub, round the corner from where you went to school, that must got to give you a sense of yeah, belonging yeah. and a sense of pride. It is, and I thought it was just nice, it was different that it wasn't just a Liverpool thing. I thought it had to resemble a little bit of, you know, my, that's where I was as a kid, yeah, yeah. really. You know, more than probably, a, you know, a Liverpool player. So I think it was nice that you got the red and the blue. And uh, because I don't think it lasted two minutes, if it was just a Liverpool one. <laughs> off, no. I mean, like, we're talking about it being a great time, but also everyone knows this city's been through rough times and on the horizon, it looks like there's rough times to come as well. Well, it, it, it was like that when I first started supporting or going, going to Merseyside derbies, you know, that mid 80s, early 80s, felt like it was a really tough place to be. Yeah. I was probably not aware of it as maybe I certainly am right now. You know, just being a kid, just thinking, you know, this is life. But, you know, it was a tough time and uh, it feels like it's going to be pretty similar now for, you know, not just people around here, up and down the country. Obviously, the Derby's an important football game, but now it's an important opportunity for the community to get together because every week there's fans who bring food for food banks, but the Derby's an opportunity for both clubs to do it at the same time. Isn't it? What has been great is this initiative I think started, you know, in the city. Uh, Everton, Liverpool fans getting together, you know, the fans supporting food banks. And I, and I think it's been one of the things that we can be most proud of as a city, that this is now kicking on and going to other, other places of the country yeah. as well, and other people are getting involved. But, I mean, we know there's a big rivalry. There should always be that. At times, it might cross a line now and again, and, and we don't want to see that. But I think what we're seeing right now with this, I think it's a great way to bring 
the football clubs together, the sets of supporters together, and realising that for us, football is, at times, certainly on Derby Day, feels like the biggest thing in the world, but it's not. You know, what people are going through right now is. Thanks for making time for oh, us. Oh, you're very welcome. Yeah, it's okay. Very How long have you been volunteering? When the first started in 2003, it was. Yeah, mm. I'm, I'm about nine years, yeah. yeah. How, how's it been since then? Is it is there being almost feels like there's a greater need than when you first opened? Is, is there more people coming in and using the food bank? Oh yeah, I'd, I'd say you know there's been about uh, more than two and a half thousand more uh, meals that we've provided this year compared to last year, and obviously we used to be open one day a week, whereas now families are coming every day. We never turn anybody away. Diverse, a lot of people coming in, don't you? Know? Yeah, get a lot of young. Males coming in. Yeah, single males. Single yeah. males coming in. Yeah. A lot of, you know, large families. Um, and it's not necessarily people who are not working. They're, yeah. they're in low paid jobs. Yeah. Like so they, time, they're coming to supplement, you know, what yeah. they can provide themselves. There's always that thing about like a stigma attached to sort of going to a food bank. Do you think there's still people out there who aren't actually using the food bank who, yeah. who need it? Yeah. yeah when a person comes for the first time they've had to take that leap yeah. mm -hmm. and build up their courage to come here mm -hmm. and when they come in they're so thankful and they're so very um, appreciative for what you provide because we're, we're only providing three days of emergency food you end up being like a counsellor sometimes yeah. because they've got yeah. they tell you all the problems as well you yeah. know and you got to, you sit there and listen to them and try and direct them we try and signpost them to different organisations that may be able to help them. Yeah. Sometimes you, I haven't got a cooker, I haven't got a microwave. I'm, well, I'm some living people have only the got a kettle like that, and they're know? trying to warm food using a kettle. So when you you have to you have to sort of ascertain what the needs are so you can give them the right food. What's the type of food or the type of product that you really suggest you bring? Of toiletries. The main thing is like soup, beans. Um, tin meat, pasta, rice, biscuits, tuna, rice pudding, tuna, fish, yeah. yeah. Well sadly we, we need a lot of food banks within the city but how important is it that the two football clubs, certainly supporters, come together, you know, the initiative of you know, fans supporting food banks, how helpful is that? I think for me is it's obviously that people generally care about their community and every item, that, even a small item of food goes a long way. Mm -hmm. So we do need support of everyone. So something like that where there's a football ground where yeah. tens of thousands of people yeah. are coming. Yeah. As you say, if people, everyone brings one tin. If one person brought a tin or one person yeah. brought a bar is, it, it raises the profile as well yeah. to see that, you know, Liverpool and Everton care. Yeah. You know, care in yeah. the community, yeah. if you like. And yeah. the good thing about the derby as well, the, the donations that they're yeah. making will yeah. get doubled. So yeah. those things yeah. will, will, will in themselves double. Hiya. 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 Okay. Hiya. 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 I'm John. Good to meet you, John. I'm Jill. Hi John, I'm Maria. Hello Maria, how are you? I'm fine, thanks. Hi Jamie. Maria, okay, Jamie, yeah. yeah. So tell us, you're, you're with Food Cycle, which yeah. is not a food bank. Explain what Food Cycle is. So Food Cycle is a charity. It's got over 60 projects uh, nationwide. There's three actually here in Liverpool. There's uh, one here in, in Bootle. There's Old Swan on the Dingle as well. And what Food Cycle does, it takes the donations that you get from food banks or from supermarkets. And it takes those donations and turns that food into a hot three-course meal for anybody that needs it. Because that was one of the things that we were just learned in the food bank, that, that, that you can give people food, but sometimes they haven't got the facilities to cook it. Yeah. They haven't got the electricity. You know, I used to help out in the food bank before COVID, and this is what you had to think of. Some people haven't got a cooker or they can't afford to turn it on. And, and it's on. always a vegetarian meal. Because it's inclusive then. So, you know, whatever your dietary habits, anybody can come in and have a good, hot, nutritious meal as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No food banks or places like this are getting as much because of this way people are. People haven't got it, have they? Everybody's cutting back. Even people who are not desperate are still careful these days, aren't they? And it's only going to get worse, isn't it? 
No, so you're going to get more people needing need, exactly, these facilities, exactly. but you've got less people yeah. who are actually giving, giving yeah. zone yeah. 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 As the generations change, as there are more older people on their own, it's really important facility just to, for people yeah. to drop in, yeah. have a chat, have a hot meal, seal the faces. Mm -hmm. Sometimes this might be the only time of the week that some people get to see other people. I was yeah. going to say, how, how have you noticed the impact on mental health? Uh, well, when we first started, because it was new, people had come in and they'd sit on a table of four on their own. And then someone would come and go, do you mind if I sit here, love? And now you come in and there's six of them on a table and it's great. I've seen sort of young, you know, people bringing their kids with them, teenagers with them, right through to pensioners who are, yeah. who are coming on their own, as I say, for the company. People are coming straight from work to have a hot meal as well. So everyone's got different reasons, yeah. but I've got to say the spread is so wide. Dietary requirements, there's a few people here, and we now have a list of what certain people can't eat. Yeah. Tell the chef less spice in that soup next week. They want to eat it. Yeah. Yeah. It's like being a you know, you're not the home now, you know, yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah. that's a good thing. It means they feel comfortable. I think food has always brought people together, hasn't it? Yeah. Whether it's families yeah. or you know, going it's out that together. Classic break of bread, yeah. It yeah. is. It is yeah. exactly that. And I think there is a role. I think uh, you just see the people who come in, the guests that come in, you know, come to life and have a really, you know, good. They go out smiling. And don't they, they do go out yeah, smiling. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, what's brilliant about our city? We've got the two football clubs coming together, fans supporting food banks. Two reds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so we know what your loyalty is like. Yeah. But how good is it that the two football clubs come together and can help initiatives like this? I think it's lovely. But for this city, as you know, they do all pull together, don't they? Yeah. We have got that thing in us that we do help one another. And I just hope it carries on. No, and even no, those no. people can't afford to give as much as they give. But if they give a little something, yeah. every small adds to it, doesn't it? Yeah. 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 And you just get the knock on effect of that. You yeah. Just, you just yeah. yeah, exactly. You know, the more people, you know, just bringing one tin along will make a difference. That's going towards yeah. a meal, a food cycle, which yeah. is fantastic. Mm. It is great to see blues and reds coming together. Yeah. yeah. Be, you know, we, we know reasons like that. that. Yeah. 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 Great. yeah, 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 yeah. My dad is, is a red and his twin blooder. Is is a blue? Yeah, brother. yeah. Oh, and we haven't we haven't spoken yeah. for twenty five. years. the husband don't speak on dark. Is your husband the blue? Yeah. yeah. Oh really? <laughs> yeah. Anyone approaching the ground is always exciting on any game, particularly derby day. But what's it like as a player? Where you're coming yeah. in? Yeah, well, it's that drive up, isn't it? You know, for a derby game, you know what I mean? Everyone's got sort of that excitement. Everyone always, feel, I always feel with a big game, the supporters get there earlier. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. it's a case of like we want to embrace the sort of atmosphere. But as a local lad, did you feel more pressure than anyone else, or is it just regarded as just a big game? No, no, you felt you felt it more. Hundred percent, you felt it more. That you know, the, the pressure of the game. It's, it's your friends and family going there, not just yeah. Liverpoolians. It's. I've got a lot of Ever Evertonians as well on my side of the family, so it was that, for me it's always been the biggest game, it always will be, nothing will ever change that, not, you know, Man United or other clubs, the first game I'd always look for was, was Liverpool v Everton. You grew up with an Everton family and then you became like a legend for Liverpool, and if they got split loyalties on the day or the day, like... No, I mean, me real close, so like my dad, my brothers, my mum, all those people who'd have been, you know, staunch at home, they, they support Liverpool now. But I mean, when you start talking about cousins, uncles, aunties, they, they didn't really change, but I th still think, I hope they want me to do well, but maybe, <laughs> maybe not on this game. Do you know how many derbies you've played in? No. Do you know? No, I haven't got a clue. But if you ask me that, you know I think what? I'm expecting the answer. No, I know, and I, I, I knew that, but I asked it, I thought I should have researched it. <laughs> So tell us about fan support and food banks, how, how it began and, and where it's at now. The three co-founders, Ian Byrne, Robbie Daniels and Dave Kelly, Everton Liverpool, and they come together yeah. and say what can we do to help food poverty in the city. So they joined forces and uh, got the idea of fans bringing food to the match. You know, it's, uh, it's a sound simple idea, but it's genius at the same time, do you know what I mean? Because we get 50,000 tins at a game, I'll feed a lot of families in Liverpool, do you know what I mean? And, and that, it's just, it's just grown, you know, and um, do other things around the city, but we, we do every single Premiership game here and, and over the park how, for how, the last seven years. How, how proud are you that it's almost an initiative that started in the city, that's almost going around the country now, really? involving other football clubs? Oh, massively. Massive, it's amazing. From when, when I first started seven years ago, when no one knew our name, to now, where it's up and down the country, 
Started just, with a wheelie bin. No, and it started just, with a wheelie bin. Collecting in a wheelie yeah. bin, yeah. What made you get involved? About eight, nine years ago, I was a food bank user myself, and you know, I was down on my luck. And uh, the food bank helped me get back on my feet. And now I'm in a privileged position to uh, give my time and give back, you know, what was given to me. You know what I mean? Because I know what the struggle. It's brilliant what you've done, but how sad is it that there's a, such a huge need yeah. and demand for It is. It's sad this. that there's a need for it. And, like, obviously our aim is the fact that we one day we won't have to do it anymore. Yeah. We won't have to stand outside before the match. We won't have to do collections. That's the aim, isn't it, to shut us down. Have you found that the needs grown gone up in the time yeah. that you've been yeah, there? Massively, yeah. yeah. I think the the need is out sometimes outweighing now what we're getting in. Like we're struggling to cope with the the demand now because of obviously what's going on with the cost of living and things like that. And with that in mind, the Derby Day is a special day, isn't it? Because the donations are, are double by quarter, aren't they? What, yeah. what, what impact does that make? Massive. It's a massive impact yeah. because we usually get like say, say a ton of food at a derby game and for them to match that two ton of food if you replicate that into to uh, portions to feed people it, it, it helps it's massively a lot of food, yeah, it's yeah. A lot of food. like you see you've got beans you've got pasta sauce noodles yeah, yeah, we've got it's loads of stuff what would you like people to to bring um, it's anything non-perishable isn't it yeah. that we can store yeah, so anything like, from uh, yeah. women's products as well. You know, people think it's a food bank, you know, it's food. Yeah, 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 and yeah. So, yeah, just non perishables. Everyone's stressed at the moment, so yeah. don't feel they have to bring a big shopping bag full of stuff. Yeah. A couple of tins in the pockets will do, just yeah. something to keep yeah. the wheels turning. Well, thanks for what you okay, do. Thank you for being here. Good work, right, superb. Thank, thank, thank you. Thanks. All right, love to see you too. Nice one. This city needs our help, so bring your food donations to this Derby Day and Quorn will double the donations. Together we can make a difference for those who need it the most. Hunger doesn't wear club colours, so let's all come together for our community. And double your donations on Derby Day with Quorn.